Online reselling can be fun, but also challenging. If you want to grow your business, one of the ways you can do that is by trying to sell new items, which is why I bought this sewing machine from the thrift store. I've never sold a sewing machine before, and there was one thing that worried me. If it does sell, how do I ship it? So let's go back to why I bought this thing in the first place. I found it at the thrift store in great condition for only $12. And after looking up comps on eBay, I saw that it could be worth over $200. So I thought the risk is definitely worth the reward. After cleaning it up and testing it out to make sure it works, I took some pictures of it and listed it on eBay. I had it listed for $194.77 plus $39.98 shipping. And after about one month of lowball offers, I finally received a decent offer of $185 plus shipping. So I took it. All right, so the sewing machine just sold for $185 plus $39.98 shipping, which brings the total to $224.98. It's pretty awesome. So now comes the hard part. Shipping. But first, we need to make sure we have all the shipping supplies we need. A big enough box, some bubble wrap, a lot of bubble wrap, a tape gun, and a box resizer. Which is this cool thing I got from Lonnie over at Shed Flips. Thanks Lonnie. I have also been fortunate enough to have just watched a video by John the Cincinnati Picker on how he packages sewing machines and I got some great tips. So now that we have everything we need, I'm going to start by wrapping a layer of bubble wrap around it long ways. Then I'm going to do a layer going around the sides and just overlap the edges. Next, I'll do another layer over the top long ways, followed by a layer around the sides long ways to be sure we've got everything covered. For the pedal and the manual, I decided to use small bubble wrap and layered it up for plenty of protection. I also forgot to mention that we would be using packing paper to fill in the gaps once it's placed down in the box. It took some time to get everything positioned and snug, but once we did, it was time to resize this box. I decided how deep it needs to be, perforated the edges of the box, cut down the corners of the box, and folded it into shape. It may not be a perfect square, but the goal is to make a tight fit that doesn't move around, and we accomplished that. So now we punch in the weight and dimensions to the eBay shipping page, and it will show us our cheapest shipping option, which in this case will be FedEx Home Delivery for $21.50. Not too shabby. Considering the profit margins on this sale, it was well worth having the correct shipping supplies. And although you can cut costs by buying wholesale shipping supplies online, it's nice to know that if you're trying something new and need some quick supplies, places like Home Depot can save the day. 
So in conclusion, I think it's obvious to say that you have to take risk in order to grow your business, which is why I wasn't going to let the fear of a big bulky item keep me from making lots of profit. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. This is my first time doing a storyteller type video and I plan on doing a lot more. But in the meantime, I do have more traditional direct videos on how to sell on eBay and things like that, so don't be shy to check it out. I really appreciate you watching my videos and until I see you next time, always remember, life's a bargain, flip it.